Carl BWF World Championships. In the cultural capital of Switzerland, reputations are on the line in the sport's most important event of the year. All roads lead to the magnificent St. Jacobs Hall, newly renovated and a fitting stage for the best men and women on the planet. A warm welcome along on day two of these championships. You can see our 3D map there. We've got nearly 400 players in total from almost 50 different countries. That just shows you the wide-ranging appeal of this event from just about everywhere on the globe. And if you were with us yesterday, you'd have enjoyed plenty of drama on opening day. We can almost guarantee more of the same today. Some players, of course, will relish the spotlight. Others will face the ignominy of an early exit. Here's our lineup. We begin with an intriguing mixed doubles. The veteran Russians, Dremen and Dimova, face a couple of young guns from down under. It's women's singles to follow. The talented Thai, Pawi Chokuwong, starting big favorite to KO the Canadian, Rachel Honderich. Then we've the legend that is Lin Dan, still hungry for a sixth world title at the age of 35. He faces the Indian ace, HS Pranoy. Men's doubles comes next. The Russians, Ivanov and Sozanov, with 20 titles to their name. They're up against Arif and Azrin from Malaysia. Some more mix to follow, and what could well be a tight, tense encounter featuring Ronald and Sofika against the Dutch pair, Tabling and Peak. And then we'll spotlight the reigning men's champion, Kento Momota, as the Japanese continues the defense of his title against Luis Penalva. They're the first six matches. Now we've got six more uh, to come after that. So 12 matches live in total. Jill Clark and Morton Frost will be guiding you through these six and pick out some big names there. Yamaguchi, uh, the top seed in the women's event, and uh, Jonathan Christie as well. So no need to go anywhere for the next, oh, maybe 10, 11 hours. Who knows? Let's see where uh, this first mixed doubles match features in the draw. So you can see the 16th seeds, Lu and Chen, lie in wait for the winners. Lu and Chen getting a bye through into round two. My name's Trevor Harris. Alongside me this morning, and no doubt this afternoon too, will be Steen Pedersen. I guess we got something for everyone first six matches today we got the, the legend of Lin Dan we got this intriguing mixed doubles uh, with a what is it a, a 15 year age difference between the youngest and <laughs> yeah. the oldest on court yeah. almost like you and me here nearly it's exactly players on their way for our opening match just just gone nine o'clock uh, local time here and uh, as I say who knows how much action will be in store for us today. Dremen and Dimova, 38 and 37 years of age, respectively, against 22-year-old uh, Simon Leung and uh, Gronje Somerville, who's just a couple of years older. Officials, as you can see. Australia. Just a reminder, of course, we will have uh, Hawkeye reviews in operation. The first ever meeting between these pairs, by the way. So each pair will have uh, the benefit of a couple of challenges per game, and if successful, they will keep them. Fit for 38. Uh, Evgeny Dremin. They've actually slipped down the rankings uh, quite a bit, the Russian pair. They were 17 in the world last summer. There you see it. That was their highest ranking. And now they're down at 37. But they have won eight events as a pair over the last five years from uh, Chelyabinsk. Evgeny Dremin. Six foot five. Hard to lob. Uh, Yevgenia Dimova, who's uh, just a year younger than her partner, as you can see there. They actually won three tournaments last year, albeit 
uh, minor tournaments in Spain, Brazil, and also in Austria. Losses of the man, isn't it? Training. So look at their opponents. Uh, there's the young, who's nine inches shorter than uh, Dremi, but it's going to be a, a tough encounter for him, you'd have thought today. 72 is the ranking for Leung and Somerville. Somerville actually won the uh, Canadian Open women's doubles early this year. Born in Melbourne, as you can see. I always find it fascinating, Steve, when you, you've got like such a huge difference in terms of experience between these two these two pairs. I mean, Dremen and Demova obviously know each other's game inside out and backwards. Um, Leung Somerville still still learning to a degree, still still maturing as a pair. Very much. Uh, mixed double is perhaps the most tactical discipline here, so it takes time to master whenever you start a partnership. Two things to note is that I think with Matthias Bo not qualifying for this World Championships. You know, that's Ready to play! Players than Bremen. Simon Leon. Glasses now after Chen Hongling, the Taiwanese doubles master. He retired last year, so I guess uh, Simon Leong is the only player playing wearing uh, glasses. Uh, most players needing uh, optical aid is using uh, co contact lenses when they're playing. Yeah, I guess it's whatever you're you're comfortable with. Yeah, and, and some might not um, be able to use contact lenses. Yeah, it's it's it's. Um, I expect a reasonably close match between an, an up-and-coming pair and a pair who's perhaps um, um, fighting to uh, maintain their ranking. But with the Russians as um, as favourites. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Grania Somerville, Simon Wing Hang Leung, Australia. And on my left, Evgeny Dremen, Evgenia Dimova, Russia. Evgenia Dimova to serve to Grania Somerville. Love all. Play. So here we go, first shuttle hitting anger on day two of these championships. One, love. Nice placement. Nice. Service over. Simon Long. One, it's almost a slow motion point, wasn't it? Yeah. Just to illustrate <laughs> the ace difference, then um, Bremen and Dimova, they could have had they opted to play in um, last week's World Senior Championships in uh, Katowice in Poland in the plus 35 category. Two, one. That's way too strong for that. The World Championships here in Basel. Well, second time in the first minute of the match that the Aussies have uh, exploited a large expanse of space on the other side of a net. Three, one. You are mentioning yesterday, Steen, there was, a, there was quite a bit of noticeable drift in the hall. Um, we didn't see it um, in, in the, uh, I was calling the early matches yesterday, and, and there was uh, next to no drift um, there. So um, interesting to see whether um, the conditions um, change over 
over the day, so to speak. Ooh. He seems to have trouble moving uh, backwards. Um, quite a lot of uh, leg support on the two Russians. Seat 9,000. Had uh, decent attendance yesterday, particularly late afternoon, evening. Expecting um, very big crowds again at the weekend, particularly. Obviously, a work day in Switzerland. That's good. Semi finals on Saturday, Six. finals on Sunday. From Lung. Service over seven four. Huge distance that. Service over five seven. Seems like uh, he's not moving totally freely. Here's the, the Russian coaches. They're based in Vladivostok. I've been told Russian national practices in uh, Moscow. Service over six. Eight. Well, they're clawing their way back eight. into this, and the Russians after what was a a sluggish beginning, to say the least. Play. Do look at the strapping on both Dremin and uh, Dimova's uh, legs. Service and think, oh, maybe nine, a few issues seven. there. That's what happens is you get a bit older, obviously. <laughs> trying to recover from an... It's, it's the very recovery rare. time that just increases. That's it's the other very thing. rarely some of it comes off. <laughs> <laughs> going to see later on in this tournament Golu Ying, the Malaysian uh, female mixed double star, and her legs are almost totally covered. Uh, not necessarily because she's very old, but uh, suffered a lot of injuries. Port White, there's a challenge. I don't think they're completely convinced. They, they kind of looked at each other, and it was almost a, a secondary thought to 
use the Hawkeye, but they may as well. Yeah, but also they're, they're not that used to playing on Hawkeye Colts. Yeah. It's mainly in World Tour <laughs> tournaments, and uh, I think Gronja caught the um, challenge, and um, she's playing a bit more World Tour tournaments and women's doubles than uh, this mixed doubles combination. One challenge remaining. But the linesman got it right. Service over. Eight, ten. Play. Nine, ten. Well played Somerville, so they'll go to their Service interval with a two-point lead. Nine, the Australians, eight. that represents something of a recovery though for the Russians who were behind pretty much for the whole of that opening game. to a discussion from the Russian coach there. Wow, backhand smash from uh, Simon Long. <laughs> he was a little bit surprised himself. Look at that. <laughs> non on the line, really, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's having trouble moving uh, in his defense um, and he's under pressure Guinea Dremen or when he's moved from one side to another played a shot there then it's pretty much uh, Dimoa who is uh, to cover the next one this is a good chance for um, Leung and uh, Somerville to uh, enhance their rankings of course uh, trying to qualify for an Olympic spot presenting uh, Oceania. Yeah, just, just a year away now. The uh, games in Tokyo. And they are the Oceanian champions. Wait. Traffic jam there. The uh, backhand corner. Too good again from Lyon. Just, just to let you know, by the way, from no. maybe a, a badminton aficionado. Next year, there will be no world championships. They don't happen in Olympic years. So all eyes will be on Tokyo in 12 months' time. Clearly, some frustration on the Russian side of the net at the moment. Out. Service over, 10-15. Played. Well played by Simon Dong, who's uh, using his excess 16, speed compared to uh, his opponents. Not that anyone, I don't think, is seriously suggesting that you know, this Australian pair will win the uh, World Championships. But just to give you an idea, this is the 25th staging, and only twice in the whole history of the event have gold medals been won by non-Asians or Europeans ever. 2005, an American pair won the men's doubles, and uh, a Kiwi pair won the mixed. And that's it. Service over 17 11.
So they've put themselves into a really strong position here at 17-11, the Aussies. Oi. Flat flicker from uh, 1911. No. Very efficient against the uh, tall Russian. Game point 11. So nine game points for Leung and Somerville in an opening game that they have pretty much dominated from the start. He was that he put that into the net. Almost had it too long to think about it. Shouldn't be costly in the scheme of things. In less than quarter of an hour, and with a minimum of fuss, 21 points to 12. And the Australian pair have the early advantage here against the veteran Russians. Court one, 20 seconds. Court one, 20 seconds. Second game, level play. So we need a fight back here, the Russian pair. play great clear by Simon Leung oh, what a great drop very very good first rally here in the second game where 
The Russians started out um, from a more patient defensive perspective, but that clear there really opened everything up. And of course, we can see that in, in terms of movement on court, the um, Australians, they have a big advantage. So for the Russians, it's about um, getting the uh, match to be played on the racket, so to speak, that um, in, in more or less static positions. So you only have to move um, a minimum around court. So that will, of course, be their game plan now here in the second game. And perhaps they warmed up a little bit. It takes a little bit longer to get down the body going when you go on an H. A bit of homework there, an Australian coach. Uh, just to um, correct myself, by the Three. way, New Zealand never won a gold medal. It was a bronze in 2005. Daniel Shirley, Sarah Runiston Peterson, mixed doubles bronze. American men, though, uh, Bark and Gunawan did win the gold in 2005. And there's a twist to, to those medals there. Um, how impressive. They were that uh, Sarah Wunderstein is a born Dane and uh, Tony Gunnarvan, of course, born Indonesia and the uh, former Olympic uh, champion in men's doubles together with um, Service over uh, Kandra Vijaya and also a world champion in men's doubles with Halim Harianto. So he's won three major titles with three different partners. Uh, Tony Gunnarvan, one of the best ever men's doubles players, in my opinion. Service over, 5-1. Well, this is the kind of start that the uh, Russians were looking for in the second game. Just getting them back on track after disappointing first game. Service over, 2-5. Yeah. They were the ones who had uh, more things to discuss in the... Uh, Interval and uh, able to Service over make some changes, six, whereas Fulkman and um, Simon Long was more or less uh, trying to continue. So now we'll see how they react to, to the Russian start to the second game here. Service over three. He could be the first six. to admit, and Dremen has not been. At his best so far. Yeah. round of uh, mixed doubles and this um, 48 pairs in the tournament which um, means that there's um, 16 pairs extra compared to normal world tour tournaments where there's only um, a 32 pair draw and it also means that all the seeded pairs have a bye here in the, the first round is that the momentum was all with the Australians in the first game and it just comes and goes so quickly. Great play by the Russians. 
keeping control of the Service rally. Order. I think if I Nine, were. Five. The Australians have a try and flick serve to uh, Eugenia Dimova. Trying to mix the uh, positions up from the beginning of the rally. Well left. I actually thought that um, Simon Leon Service a couple of times have uh, played shots nine. that was going long. Well, that was emphatic from Dremin. Service over. Ten, six. Read the serve and dispatched it. Eleven six. So a very interval. handy lead for the Aussies at the mid-game interval. And looking in good shape here, potentially to set us up for a final game decider. Dremin again. Start out in the flat game and uh, we have to attack once. It's too easy to read that uh, Bronya Summerall, she's trying to play the opposite corner where um, Dimova is um, covering at the net, but that just means that you'll go there immediately after the service, so got to uh, have some variation in your game, and it's 14, amazing six. how the events have changed. I mean, it's almost like a total breakdown on the Australian side. Like watching a different match, isn't it? One yeah. game to the next. Yeah. That's better. He should play a cross clear to Dimova. Fault. Simon Leung. Wow. Service over. Yep. <laughs> Seven, 14. Can, uh, sorry if it becomes a little bit um, too tactical or uh, it's just that when you're used to seeing the World Tour tournaments, there's so many options here. Smashes are not making any impact at the moment, uh, Simon Leon. Uh, the Russian defense have got it 16, covered. Seven. And he's uh, playing himself more or less out of the uh, rallies, exposing his partner. So this is where the experience play. comes into play in this uh, match here. And the other thing is that all of a sudden, Dremin started coming to the party as well. Particularly from the back 17, of the court, and they're just four seven. points away now from leveling the match. Yeah, and if you at some point can uh, 
put pressure on your opponents, then you can say a lot about what the replies are going to be. 18, 7. And if there's, <laughs> if there's new viewers joining now, you might wonder how uh, Lungen Somerville won the first game, 19, but it was a total turn of events well, here. Especially to 12. Yeah. It wasn't like yeah. it was close. Almost Service surprised now when Eight, the German 19. misses, but don't imagine that's going to be too costly. It's really about how the Aussie pair are going to regroup for the decider. That's a Service whole clutch over. of 20, game points, 12 game of point them now eight. to level the match. And that'll do nicely. So 21-8, a complete reversal of what we saw in the first game. Venom in playing for well, not even half an hour and with two games in. So all set for an upcoming decider. One game all. If can hear. No. Court one, twenty seconds. Court one, twenty seconds. So can the Russians pick up where they left off in that second game? Can the Australians find the mojo again? Final game. Is it deserted Lolo. them completely? Play. It's well played. Service over. That, that's going to be the uh, key to this um, third game here, whether the um, Two players on the other side, Gronje Sommerwell and Leon, whether they can play a clever attacking game. The Russians got back in uh, this match by playing a really, really good defense, lifting in um, control. And uh, the opponents more or less, uh, less lost the, uh, the plot, so to speak. Got to uh, move these two players here before attacking them. Excellent follow up. Service over. One, two. Good shot by uh, Simon Dill. Service over. Finding the open space. Three, one. Yeah, lovely piece of placement. Control lift. Good 
Good combination with two Aussies there. Did enough, Leung, even though, as you mentioned in that last game, his uh, smashes weren't particularly potent weapons, but the pressure was applied and uh, they got the job done in the end, the two of them. It's a brilliant illustration um, of how tactical a game mixed doubles is. Amazing still. I mean, they were almost embarrassed Six, in that second three. game, the Australians. Now they've made a good start in the decider. Was is there something that coach has said to them? So look, this is you know you need to. I, I hope there this. is. But now now the coach have had a chance to sort of figure out what was the Russians' uh, move, what was their countermeasure against our really great first game, and uh, Malutin here is not satisfied. So that's what the Russians have needed to come up with, figure out what, what are the opponents going to do here. Out. And uh, and how can we Service prevent over. it? Four, six. And, uh, that should uh, give us a, an exciting third game here. Well, the poor tents are good at the moment. Good service return. Injects pace into the shot and uh, service over. simply Seven, uh, four. Quickly. doesn't let. Dremen play a shot in, in some sort of control. He's struggling from the third shot on. And we'll see that if, if they can't get those defensive lifts in control, um, the Russians, they will struggle in the movement part of the game. And apparently, the uh, Australians, they've decided that in the attack, they're Eight, going to four. target Eugenia Dimova. It's the second time here in the, the side I've seen that cross smash from Simon Leung and it's always a good idea to have some agreements on what you can do in uh, the attack. She's been good at the net, Somerville, yeah. hasn't yeah. she? They've been able to use their, their speed of movement just by changing um, a few things in um, shot placement. This time he went for court two, I think. <laughs> that was on the blue. Five, that smash there, yeah. The equivalent of a dart, nowhere near the board. But it is the same shuttle they're playing with, they found it. <laughs> Excellent play by Eugenia Dimova at the net. Six, nine. Follow up there. Quick racket movements. Come on. Service over. Ten six. It's a good recovery to win that point from the Aussies, and they've got a, a very healthy lead now at the mid-game interval.
We heard some words from the Australian coach about um, going for the opportunities, all, all the time trying to create the opportunities not to play passive. And I think they were passive in that second game, weren't they? They kind of allowed the Russians to take complete control. Yeah, but also the, the Russians, they would have discussed that they're not really being disciplined enough. They're not uh, playing that uh, defensive uh, position that helped them in the second game. And then um, they've got to figure out what to do about the uh, attack from uh, Leung and Somerville when um, they're targeting Eugenia Dimova. They have no right to win, really. Russians in the ascendancy, and there's uh, an issue here by the look of it for Demova. Oh. Problem with her eye. Yeah, uh, maybe she uh, she hit the shuttle uh, a little bit into her own eye, I think. Came off the frame of a racket. Sometimes it goes a little bit sideways. Nice idea. Long yeah. execution. Service over eight twelve. Excellent coverage by Gronje Somerville. Service over 13 8. Takes some guts to go for that because he's shown earlier on that he can play the cross net, um, Eugenie Drummond. Too happy. Two so, Russian coaches, they, they're definitely not being disciplined enough, um, Dremen and Dimola. There's almost an air of resignation, wasn't there, about that body language, and it's mirrored by Dremen and Dimova on court in big trouble here. Yeah, and, and they create 15, the points for the Australians. They, they've drifted away from the tactic in the second game where they basically lift it. They should basically lift on the first shot here on the service return, just lift and go into the defensive position and hope that the Australians are going to sort of um, um, get ahead of themselves. But um, now seven points adrift for Dremen and Dimoa, so it's looking uh, very difficult at the moment. That's the way. But they found a good plan, Leung and uh, Summer will by attacking the outer side of uh, Dimua. That has uh, been the key for the Australians in the offense. 16, eight. Can almost always expect the straight return from uh, Dimua in that situation. And it's so much easier for Bronya Samuel to uh, cover the net. in the uh, attacking uh, position there from Simon Leung. Just for the drop shot instead of the smash. Getting control of the rally. Perfect uh, 
attacking play. I think that was an Australian fan. He certainly had the colours and the hat. Service over 10 17. And just four points away now from securing it will be a morale boosting victory. The two young Australians. Point alive, and then Leung arguably with his Service best smash of the match. 18 10. Yeah, and best, best rally of the match, best mixed doubles rally of the match, no doubt about it. Service over 11 18. A rare to move error inches the Australians Return the closer properly. to the Service winning line over here. 19 11. Another error. Yeah. 20 match Sets points. Up nine 11. match points for Leung and Somerville. And in some ways, good to see youth prevail much quicker on court. Um, Somerville and uh, Leung. Yeah. After the tactical Simon adjustment, after the second Call game, in. they've been almost as dominant here in the third as uh, they were in the first. Well, if this challenge is successful, obviously it matches over. I don't think it will be. No. I think it's a case of, well, because he could, he did challenge. Challenge unsuccessful, one challenge remaining. It's a little bit like sort of getting ready for Service the uh, match points and perhaps also enjoying it a little 20. bit like... Uh, the guy in, uh, who wanted to be a millionaire who, who called yeah. his dad at yes. the uh, final question he, saying, I don't really answer. want to ask you anything. I <laughs> yes. just want to tell you I'm going to win a million. Yeah, I think it's called savouring the moment and they can savour it now. 21-12. And the same score as they won the first game by. There was the, the second game which the Australians were uh, dominated in. Kind of a curious egg of a match. But in the end, it's uh, an excellent yeah. victory for Simon oh, Leung and Gronje Somerville. Against a Russian 21, pair that 12, only played 21, in patches, 21, in all honesty. They certainly won't be pleased with the performance they put in, but they will be in the smile from Somerville. Says it all. 21 12. 8 21. 21 12. They're through safely enough. We're back in just a moment with women's singles action. 